What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Engineers Out Filters podcast, episode 73. I'm your host, Jacob Thompson. And tonight, I'm drinking... So, Dane, you remember if you actually had this one before, but it's the Clown Shoes Zen Garden. No, I don't think I have, actually. Okay, I thought you had a Clown Shoes one at some point. Uh, uh, maybe I'm just... My memory I don't think is so. Bad. But it's I think a, I've had a Clown Shoes before. Maybe that's what it is. I know, I know I've, I've heard it before, but I picked it up today at the liquor store because it's a New England IPA. And I'm in New England now. So I'm like, and I already love Spoilers. New England anyway. <laughs> Spoiler oh, alert. In case you didn't notice by my 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 new shot of another white apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Plain. It's a very familiar shot, but also yeah. some, a lot of things are missing. It's, <laughs> it's, a, lot, it's a lot emptier. Background. It's a lot yeah, emptier. And the, my camera is not as good as Dayton, so like, it's just closer and you can't see as, as much. But uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, who else we got tonight? I'm Joseph. And I'm drinking uh, an Odell Brewing Rupture. Uh, O'Doul's? Fresh gr- it's the Rupture Fresh Grind. Huh? O'Doul's? No, it's, it's Odell. <laughs> <laughs> it's the O'Doul's. <laughs> um, actually, this is a brewery in Colorado that I've been to. Um, but I was like right after I turned 21, so I didn't like a lot of like good beer at the time so i don't think i had this one when i was there but i remember being there it was a really cool brewery so hmm. sorry can you show the can one more time I missed it it's called the rupture fresh grind oh, I've seen that like, yeah yeah i've seen it quite a bit and i've always wanted to try it and i just, just haven't until visiting the other day nice uh well i'm gabe and i'm drinking the shorts brew soft parade and the reason well, this is special you. is they don't sell this in Minnesota, uh, but we had a guy who was moving from Michigan to Minnesota to pick us up some, and this is my third one out of six already, so <laughs> reserves are running low. I had my third one, because I also got a six pack of it, and I had my third one the other day, so. Y'all have no miss, self-control. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's operate so good. It's That and like Oberon are all you need in the summer. Opera is a very good summary beer because, like, I guess I didn't say what type it is. It is a fruit ale brewed with blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, and blackberries, and it is seven and a half percent. So it'll get you there and taste good the whole way. They cut it down from two seven and a half percent. Uh, my brother in law used to drink it, and he said you could get it at a bar, and it was like nine percent, and it tasted the exact same. Oh, that's big dream. Yeah, that's why they cut it down. It's like people were like, oh, just chug it. <laughs> it's such an easy drinking beer. It's very easy to drink. Hmm. It's really. Uh, and I'm Dayton, and I'm drinking a Narragansett. As you can see, made on honor, sold on merit. And it's a, it's a, it's a shitty ass lager from out here in, well, it's from Rhode Island, but. Uh, yeah, it literally just tastes like any any of your cheap ass beers, like Bud Light, Bush Light, like you fucking name it. This is what it tastes like. But it's cost the same. What? Does it cost the same? It's. I think I paid five dollars for a six pack of of Tall Boys. Okay, so it's not, not bad at all. It's it's cheap as fuck. I thought you were gonna say five bucks for a pint and then say that's the mm-hmm. same. Mm-hmm. I literally yeah, I picked this up and I was just like. I saw it, in, or I was shopping for something else, and I saw this, and I was like, dude, it's five bucks. I got to get it. <laughs> you got to yeah. do it. I was looking for Connecticut brews when I was at the liquor store today. Granted, it was like kind of a smaller liquor store than I thought it was going to be, because this one's out of Boston and uh, Vermont, but I know there are some Connecticut brews. Wait, which, which liquor store did you go to? The one by Aldi. The oh, don't, don't go to that one. Go to the, go to the one that's by Big Y. It's okay. called Grand that, Wine and one. Spirits. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Still, still getting the lay of the land down here. Mm-hmm. But again, we'll talk about that in a hot minute. Uh, first, welcome back to the podcast. Um, as always, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at EWF Podcast. You can follow us on Twitch at EWF underscore podcast, where we're live right now recording. Uh, you can watch us on Thursday nights, uh, 7, 8, no, well, 8, 7 Central. There we go. 
Um, you can watch us record live, see the episodes early if, you, if that's your thing. You can also uh, find our show every Monday on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play. Um, so before we get into like the main main deal tonight, before we, we kind of catch up and everything, I wanted to uh, take a moment to talk about uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. So it's the timing has been weird on this one <laughs> uh, because we couldn't record last week. And so uh, the last time we recorded was two weeks ago. And as you know, if you listen to our last episode, um, that was kind of right when and kind of right before things really started kick, uh, kicking off. I uh, recorded the Thursday after uh, George Floyd was killed, and we kind of gave some initial like thoughts and just what we had experienced in Minneapolis uh, that that soon after um, he was murdered. Um, so that was kind of weird listening to that uh, last week and just getting that time capsule, I guess, and then understanding what ended up happening as far as how large the movement got over the following uh, two weeks. Um, so now we're recording this. This is June 11th right now, and you know I think it's fair to say things have died down a bit. I mean, last week I think it was really awesome and really powerful. Uh, not to say the movement is gone at all, um, but I think the to me it seems like the riots have sort of started to die down. I guess I'm not f- super up to date on like New York and um, cities besides Minneapolis, but um, things seem to have started to die down a little bit. Uh, but I, I'm still seeing a lot of uh, good uh, messaging out there. Um, so I just wanted to take a minute and not necessarily talk about our thoughts on the situation because I don't think you need to hear more white people tell you what they think uh, about something that doesn't really affect us and I don't know I'm also kind of just sick about of seeing just a million Instagram stories every single day and what you're supposed to do and it's all conflicting um, so I wanted to highlight some conversations that I found um, in the last week um, highlighting black voices and them talking about their experience their thoughts and their feelings and what they kind of um, I guess, want and need right now. So these are will be a little bit, I guess, old, uh, but it's never too old to talk about this sort of stuff. So, uh, And also everything we're going to mention will be in the description below. You can just click right to it. So just a few quick hits. Uh, first of all, I want to recommend Conan's interview with uh, Van Jones. Um, it's about 30 minutes of him. Conan really not talking much, which I really appreciate it. He really just gave it over to Van Jones to talk about his, his thoughts and feelings. That was really powerful. Um, also, there's a podcast called Spawn on Me. Um, it's typically a gaming-centered uh, podcast, but for for this episode, it was only it was about six a panel of six Black uh, Americans talking about their experiences, much different ages and and uh, parts of the country. So that was really powerful. The episode was called A Lesson in Blackness. Um, highly recommend that one. Um, if you haven't seen Trevor Noah's analysis of the George Floyd murder, I highly recommend that. It's on the Daily Show YouTube channel. Um, it's titled George Floyd Response. He gives a very different analysis i would say very philosophical talking about kind of the social contract uh of society and how it has never been fair uh to black americans and how it's been uh continued to be broken um and then finally um mkbhd who i know is a youtuber all of us uh follow mm-hmm. uh, posted a video recently uh, called reflecting on the color of my skin him just talking about his experience um growing up black and, and what that was like um, he also references neil degrasse tyson's um thoughts on that as well um, as far as media um, to recommend, um, Joseph, you wanted, you said you had a couple of black artists you follow you'd wanted to... Yeah, um, so some music that I listened to, I'm trying to remember. I, might, I think I've talked about um, them before, but two of them are actually out of Minneapolis, well, at least Minnesota, I think Minneapolis. Um, but Toussaint Morrison, he does a lot of like almost spoken word rap. Um, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, really interesting, um, really cool music um, that I like, as well as Dem Atlas, um, a l- little bit harder rap, but st- I hardly rap at the same time more, so just a uh, hip-hop kind of bluesy soul, I would say. Um, and then another one, uh, his name is Black, but it's 6-L-A-C-K. Um, he, another rapper, but he is, it's a very introspective rap, I would say. Um, he talks a lot about um, his life and and how his perspective. I don't know. It's, it's super interesting and it's very, they're not, they're very, I don't know, I would say easy to listen to artists. They're not, I mean, they're not like trap music or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. But I would definitely give them, there's some really cool artists that I, I recommend. I just and remembered... I thought- two artists that i listen to one is galant um and he's like he's like an r&b um 
sort of soul singer. Um, and I actually saw him live at Electric Forest, I think 2016, I want to say. And I just remember thinking, like, it was so funny because he was like he was like singing his heart out on stage right and it was like the middle of the summer hot as fuck out and he takes like one sip out of his water bottle and just like whips it into the crowd <laughs> <laughs> and then uh there's another one um ato so it's a-t-o um all caps and he's under the record label that eden um owns. Oh, yeah. um and i really like his music uh like I forget which artist it was, Joseph, that you that you kind of said it was like spoken word almost. Um, Toussaint Morrison. Yeah, his his style of rap is is kind of similar to that, um, but I like it because like his Ado's lyrics are, I don't know. I feel like I can relate to them more than most other rap. Like he just kind of like raps about like everyday things. Um, so I, I mean, I like that more than talking about like rapping about other things. So. Um, yeah. I would definitely. Oh, go ahead, Gabe. Sorry. I'm gonna say there's one band. If you're not into the hip hop scene, if you're into <laughs> rock or more specifically alt metal. The front man for the band Seven Dust, very widely known, uh, alternative metal band. Uh, fucking awesome singer. Got some banging tracks. Look up the song Xmas Day, and go from there. That's the song. That song's fucking awesome. I like it. Um, as far as TV shows, I know right now Netflix just started um, a black collection. Um, so if you're interested in, in watching more media ar around and about black people, I'd recommend that. Um, I'd also recommend if you have HBO Watchmen. Um, it's based on a comic book, but it's one of the most, I think, powerful shows in a long time talking about white supremacy and, and black America. Um, kind of centered around the Tulsa massacre that happened. Um, that was a real event, but they show it in the show in pretty graphic detail. But I would highly recommend that show. And then last couple things. Um, if you want to get more educated on the police, the situation, the state of the police in the United States, um, two things I would recommend is one, the most recent Last Week Tonight uh, from John Oliver talked about policing. And then a similar vein, um, there's an episode of Patriot Act um, called The Broken Policing System. Um, so I'll, I'll link those below, as I said. And those are really good for just getting more education on kind of how the police are trained and what we can do um, right now to kind of help, help to fix those. Um, and then the last thing I'll say, so I was feeling conflicted this last week on what I wanted, like, what, what I felt like I was supposed to do, what I could do. And I talked to my friend who uh, I went to high school with, the cheese biracial. We were just talking about everything and I was asking her like, what do you want from white people? You know, cause I feel so, I don't know, confused. There's like, I mentioned earlier, there's so many different messages coming at everyone of like, oh, do this, do this, do this. And it's kind of a lot. And there's a huge checklist of things that need to be done. And I don't think everyone or anyone can do all of them. Um, and I really like what she said. Um, she just says, do what you can in the area you care the most about. Um, so basically just find an area of this movement, um, maybe a city or just any sort of facet of it that you really, really care about. And then research that and focus on that. Um, I don't think it's fair to for anyone to try to tackle this entire issue because it's so massive and so it's been around for so long. Um, so I would just give uh, that advice. But then, if there's anything else anyone wants to say, I know Dayton, you went to a protest recently. I don't know if you want to talk about that at all. Yeah, yeah. So I went to a protest on last Sunday, I think, um, and I ended up just going alone. And I was kind of like, I I knew for sure that I was going to go like alone if no one wanted to go um like I was still gonna plan on going but like I was still kind of like nervous right because like I wasn't sure like what to expect really like this is like the first protest that I'd ever really attended um so like I made a sign um I put a MLK Jr. quote on it the injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere quote um because like I felt that was especially fitting because like out here our police force here in the town that I'm in like we haven't had any any like big headline cases right or we haven't even had i haven't even heard people like complain about the police um really out here um but yeah i really enjoyed it it was super powerful to me i didn't when i like when we first started like marching through like the road um and like we started like 
uh, like chanting, I guess. Is that like the right word? I don't know. But like right away, it gave me like goosebumps. And like that, I haven't like gotten goosebumps from like a feeling like that in, in like ages. Um, so, and it felt, of course, good to, to help support people in my, in my neighborhood. So, yeah. All right. Well, there oh, we go. Hang, on uh, hang on a second. I got a quote. I got a or uh, lyrics from an Edo song that are especially fitting. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, that's my little brother in the corner. He don't look like me, but he's like me. Says a lot about the world if you ask me. I'll, I'd give him the world if he asked me. In this black and white work, he doesn't read into colors. In his coloring book, they all complement each other. Um, and like, to me, like, so he released this song before this really blew up. Um, but like the, in like they all complement each other. Like that fits really well because obviously like complementary colors, except then there's also like the double meaning of like, like work together, like in real life. And I think that's kind of what we have to do right now. Like it's not, it's not only going to be uh, like black people doing this right because they need people who are in power to kind of help them use that power their privilege to to get things moving along too yeah for sure yeah so just yeah educate yourself um find things that you can do and i hope that helps and i hope that this movement doesn't stay quiet um and i like a lot of other things just kind of get refreshed by the news cycle but i hope that this um we really get some movement. And honestly, I mean, I don't know if Joseph and Gabe want to talk about the state of Minneapolis right now, but um, they've pretty much announced they're going to at least defund the police, if not disband them. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I haven't really followed up on it too much. I know I saw um, talks of pushing more to like a public safety style <clears throat> rather than an actual police force. Um, and then I've also heard just uh, reducing the funding, which is what a lot of people are calling for rather than to completely defund, but to reduce funding essentially um, yeah. and spread it out elsewhere because it's not always needed um, to the capacity that it is spent. Um, but no, I don't, I haven't really been following up. I don't know too much about it. So. Sort of on the topic of like defunding police uh, in New Zealand on my campus. Um, that I was at, we didn't have like a campus police. We had campus watch, um, and they were like they were volunteers, and then there was like one like campus watch like director who was paid or whatever, and they sort of acted like how like campus police acts here in the U.S. Um, but I just think it's kind of interesting, like, because obviously like when money's involved, then things get a lot more interesting, um, but it seems like the campus watch over there, like they were still respected um, with like what they could do. And I think if someone's volunteering to do a job like that, then they probably, they probably don't have as many like bad motives involved. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. And I know there was one city in the U S I think it was Camden, New Jersey, who effectively, it was a while ago. It wasn't recently, but they more or less abolished the police, made everyone reapply and they kind of just built it from the ground up uh, mm -hmm. to be more community focused. Um, I think something like that could be really powerful in a larger city like Minneapolis. Um, I think like the main talking points they've been saying of like, you know, if you if there's a domestic dispute instead of cops going, send like a counselor, or you know, send uh, firefighter EMTs to um, overdoses and stuff. Like send like the police. Uh, some with places where a person with a gun doesn't need to go, don't send a person with a gun. Um, well, when you call 911, they generally send all three. Generally, yeah. an EMT, firefighter, and police arrive, no matter what the issue is. Generally, all three are sent. Yeah. So I think they're trying to focus focus a little bit more and just more direct uh, what's actually needed in each situation, which I think sounds as a good starting point. Um, but yeah, vote, be educated, um, and do what you can. So. All right, so I guess moving on to the main topic, uh, we haven't really talked in <laughs> two weeks. I've been talking to Date because I'm out here now, but I've, I haven't talked to Gabe and Joseph too much in the last two weeks. But um, been fucking nice. Tell you what, 
<laughs> yeah, I think the last time I saw you guys was a couple Saturdays ago uh, when I was finishing moving out of my of the, of the apartment. Mm -hmm. um, got the last, finally got the last of my shit out of there. And... Dude, they still, this is not really matter, but Joseph, they still charge us like excess trash. We cleaned everything out of there. Like, what? The no, that, we get charged for trash every, every month. Oh, okay. I thought they were saying the trash, trash, trash in there. No, okay. no, no. That was just a trash service. And they, I don't know how in depth you looked at the bill, but it was like for the up, because they only, those like the water and that shit, they only charged until like March. And then they like kind of grouped it all in one for the rest of it. Yeah, they kind of just estimated. Yeah. Uh, dude, moving sucks for all those reasons, by the way. <laughs> just like mm -hmm. utilities and like we had to, I guess, you have to send like our old router back because the ISP owned it and just like getting all that shit. Shit, I still out. have to do that. <laughs> um but yeah so i drove out to connecticut uh last week which was a three-day drive which was interesting um the first day fucking sucked because it was like almost 100 degrees uh driving through minnesota and illinois once i got to illinois it just got super fucking windy and my car is like super is really light so i was just flying around the highway <laughs> sweating my ass off cause my ac is not that great and just like you know dying and something i i was thinking about but i didn't really think about is doing a road trip during coronavirus is so weird because you can't like stop and go into anywhere really um mostly like restaurants so like the first day i'm like what am i gonna do for lunch like i was i was so looking forward to sitting in an like air-conditioned restaurant and just taking a break for like 30 minutes but i you know i went to some random town found the culvers went to the drive through i'm like well fuck like i guess i'll go to like a park so I went to some random park and sat under a tree with some bugs flying around and ate my lunch. I just get a little bit of shade, uh, and then just kept moving. But it, it was that was a big bummer, uh, not being able to really rest anywhere. But um, thankfully, the next two days were pretty all right. It was cloudier, and um, I was able to just eat in my car on lunch. And I've noticed I didn't notice like different states though have been are varying levels with the coronavirus, like. Um, most places you go for like gas station stuff is you need to wear a mask which is nice but like a lot of places were like very much like you need a mask to enter or else you can't enter at all um i noticed connecticut in particular has been a little bit more uh, aware than i expected like all of the stories here or most of them have like one ways on each of the aisles mm -hmm. so you have to go down a certain direction um which makes sense people it's still just, don't like, listen to it no <laughs> that's why i felt like such an idiot because Fast forward to when I'm here and I have to go to the store. So Dayton recommended I go to Aldi, right? And I've never been to Aldi before, but I've heard good things. I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot. So I go into Aldi, and it's a little smaller than I expected. And, you know, there's all these one-way arrows. So I'm like, okay, I guess I got to follow them. And I had heard that, like, with Aldi, like, they have kind of their own brands. Or it's all kind of their shit. So, like, if you see something, it's probably only one of it. There's not going to be, like, options, mm -hmm. uh, more or less. So I was going through. I'm like, well, I need that. I guess I just got to grab it because I'm not going to see it again. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's awesome chips. Like, I guess I'm getting these chips and, you know, go down to the apples. And they also don't sell, like, single items of produce. You have to get things in bulk. Um, so I had to get, like, a thing of apples. And, of course, you don't have fucking Brayburns, you know, the superior apple. So Burn get, it down. I had Burn to get Gale, like, down. a fucking stimpy. They have Honeycrisp. Honeycrisp are too sweet, Dave. That's the opposite end of the spectrum. Put some salt on it, dude. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> So I get, you know, I get on my ship, but the problem is the one ways, right? So I'm following these one ways and I get to the end. I'm like, I don't have everything. Like I, I couldn't, I didn't see some stuff. So I'm like, I guess I got to go back. So then I was being, in, I was that, I was that guy who was mm -hmm. going the wrong way down one ways. I went through the store like five times, like trying to find shit. And I still never found everything I was looking for. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm cutting my losses. I'm leaving. So then I go to check out and I guess I, I just got used to the cub mindset, Joseph, where it's like they scan your shit. It goes down a conveyor and then you bag it at the end. Mm-hmm. Aldi is similar, but it's different. It's more like a New Zealand kind of store, actually, Dayton, mm -hmm. like a pack and save, where you put all your shit on the on the conveyor, they scan it super fast and just throw it in an empty cart, and then you just push the cart over to like some desk or like a counter area, and then you just pack it at your leisure. Which, granted, is probably pretty good, but I didn't know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> so like, I like didn't finish unpacking all my stuff, but before it was my turn to go. So she started scanning me, she had an empty cart to put it into. So I had to steal a cart, bring that to her, finish unloading, 
then like move that cart and it was just like a lot and she was giving me this look like what the fuck are you doing i'm like i don't know and <laughs> it was just very stressful and like, i'm never going back to aldi ever again okay <laughs> i can't, <laughs> can't face them <laughs> dude dude come come there with me this weekend and i'll show you how it's done <sighs> I, I but but i've i found i'll the way. show you Stop efficiency Stop dude Stop all these laps. no all these fucking amazing why, why do you like aldi Gabe? it's cheap as fuck and you okay you get like 90 percent of like the quality for like half the price it's super fucking cheap and i don't i don't know like i don't need to be like oh i need this specific apple i'll just get a fucking <laughs> bag of apples or like i don't know because there are some i think a lot of aldi brands are hit or miss like mm-hmm. um for example uh the fritos chili cheese chips if you guys are aware i think you've talked good. about them before actually you've ranted about them <laughs> <laughs> have I talked about on the podcast? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I well, hate those Fritos chili cheese. The I enjoy brand, them. They just, they, they sicken me. Just the idea <laughs> of them sickens me. Well, anyways, I love them. And then I got the Aldi brand ones and they were, I had like one, like I had a handful and like, I'm never eating these again. I threw them away. Yeah. But you also have on that other token, you got the dollar fifty <laughs> Girl Scout cookies that are so fucking good. And honestly, the meat is pretty good. The produce is just fine like it's not like i'm not saying the quality is bad i just don't like the process i don't like how everything's in bulk oh i don't care about that at all dude jacob if you're you just need to alter your shopping habits like i shop once every two weeks see i don't want to though date i've been shopping the same way for years and it's worked perfectly i get exactly what i need for the week i use it all and then i get i restock i guess i can lead a horse to water but i can't make a drink (laughs) <laughs> I got a bag of potatoes I got to figure out what to do with now. You know, and my cup of potatoes lasted a decent while. I know, creative. but am I sprouting? It's just a lot, all right? It's a lot. I, I, I do give mad props, though. Like, most of the stuff is organic, and it's really fucking cheap. Uh, but a lot of that cheapness comes to the fact that it's in bulk. Uh, organic is a lie. Shut it's up. not no, a so lie. We're not, it's we're not getting into this. We're not getting into this. I one. will get into it. <laughs> organic is a sham. Also, mud. <laughs> <laughs> Also, Tim shopped at Aldi. Nothing wrong with him. This him. specifically. <laughs> <You're> wrong with <laughs> him. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, I, I kind of just watched him unload the groceries. And then, like, he started cooking shortly after. And, like, all the produce was, like, pre-packaged. Which is just wasteful. Which was like my big thing. Like every, like he had like I had a lettuce and it was like in a box or I think it was or like peppers were in like this packaging. It's like just bad. Like it's just wasteful. Is my point. Like it just seemed like unnecessary packaging. Yeah, a lot of grocers do that, unfortunately. Yeah, I always see the three pack of like yeah peppers when I'm at like a normal grocery. I'm like, who the fuck gets that? Let's get the peppers right like loose. Like, yeah, just buy grab three peppers. It's not that hard. Someone it, buys it because it's got that fresh, fresh wrap around it. And <laughs> it it's the, seals the in the seal flavor. flavor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With all the holes poked into it, really. Great job of that. But Dayton's, Dayton's new roommate showed me the way and he says, go to Stop and Shop. I'm like, what's that? And Dude, I go he's not, he's not going to Stop and Shop anymore. He's going to Big Y now. All right. Well, I'm going to Stop and Shop because I like it. I'm not, I'm not going to a third grocery store now. It's I've already ruined my reputation at one, okay? Um, and Stop and Shop, they have... The salsa brand I've been missing, the uh, Desert Trading Company, I think it's called. They had it in Houghton. They didn't have it in Minnesota. Now it's back in my life, so that's very exciting. They don't have the tequila salsa, but, you know. Still Maybe big. Big Y has it. <laughs> God damn I love it. how you said that your <laughs> reputation was already, like, fucked up, but it's like you don't have a reputation in a brand new area. You have <laughs> zero reputation. I embarrassed myself at another store yesterday, so here, this it is bullshit, right? <laughs> so... We've talked about this before in the podcast a lot. I hate clothes, all right? I hate shopping for clothes. It's always a fucking hassle. Mm-hmm. Dayton and I got some uh, shorts on J. Crew Factory because there's a big sale online, right? Ordered them, get them. They're way too big. Sure, whatever. I'll, re- I'll just exchange them, right? Go online to exchange them. There's no exchange button. It's like, no, just return them and then buy what you want. And I'm like, okay. But then I go back to buy what I want, and the prices went back up. They're not on sale anymore, and I can't get my sale price. I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to Kohl's. Kohl's has never done me wrong okay so i had already gotten some stuff from Kohl's at this one in connecticut i got some sweatpants and some socks or whatever sweatpants i got mediums way too fucking big for some reason 
So like, okay, now I gotta change these. So I so I go back in. I bring the sweatpants. I'm like, alright, I need to change these out for smalls. And she's like, okay, uh, you can just leave these here at the counter. Just go grab the smalls. They're like over there. She like didn't really say. They're like over in that direction. I'm like, okay. The problem is I didn't know where they were because I had gotten the original sweatpants uh, online and they just like brought it to my car, you know, because like coronavirus stuff. So I'm like, okay, well, like, I got to find these fucking sweatpants. I walked around for like five, seven minutes, just like, oh, I could not fucking find these sweatpants. And this girl who's like in high school, she like cut the girl who helped me, comes out and just gives me this look and she's like, they're right here. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, I'm stuck like such a fucking idiot. Like, they're like, the, of course, the one place I didn't look, right? Uh, in like the men's section, I'm just like, God, fucking damn it! I know she gave me this this like dead inside look, like you are such an idiot. And I'm like, I know. So I exchanged the sweatpants. I'm like, okay, I just gotta get these shorts and get the fuck out of here, right? So I had already looked online. I'm like, okay, these are the shorts I want to get. Go to the men's section, find the shorts. This fucking one shorts brand I want is not there. I'm like, I know you have them in stock. It says online you have them in stock. Where the fuck are they? How am I not seeing them? I walk around the section like three times. I was like, God fucking damn it. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just getting these shorts. I got some different ones. Came home. They're fine. Cargo but shorts? I, just, I was in that. What's that? Were they cargo shorts? No, they're they're called doc shorts. Um, are they like just seven dockers inches. shorts? I don't know. I don't know how to. I'm not good with Are you wearing them? Shorts. I'm wearing them, yeah. Don't make a yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, for the if you want to see this, go on the, on the YouTube version. Do a little spin. Un momento. Show us that ass. <laughs> oh, okay. They're just like normal, normal chino normal shorts. shorts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chino, that's the word. Yeah. Yeah. Are they chino though? Yeah, yeah. It's the material. Okay. Only my camera was better. You could see more of my leg, but you got the idea. Yeah, yeah. They're just standard chino shorts. Yeah, and they got like a seven inch inseam. What's yeah. nice though is they don't have belt loops; they just have like a little tie thing. So that saves some time, yeah. you know. Dude, I'm wearing I'm wearing my, one of the pairs of pants that I bought from J Crew right now. The ooh, they're 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 linen thing. they're linen pants. Ooh, ooh. yeah, sounds comfy. It's, they're very well. Comfy. Then the the last part of the story, the epilogue is so I I got the new sweatpants. I got the shorts. I'm going home, right? Get home, put on the the sweatpants. Fit perfectly. But I'm looking at it, I'm like, do these look good? <laughs> I don't even know if I like these. Because <laughs> they're like white with like this black brushing pattern on them. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I was talking to Dayton. I'm like, Dayton, I need you to look at these sweatpants and tell me if they're okay. And he's like, yeah, they're fine. I'm like, all right, that's all I needed to hear. But it's like, I went through all this fucking hassle. And I'm like, do I even like these? <laughs> <laughs> but how often do you even wear sweatpants out in public? For I know, I know. Looking good. <laughs> Oh, I know. Yeah. The only oh, time is like good. when I'm going to the gym. Yeah, specifically to look good. You go to the gym to take them off later, or to just like sweat them. Like the, that's the name. Imagine that. That's <laughs> crazy. And it's like summer too, so it's not gonna be wearing them that much in the early on hot. Yeah. I just, I, I just need to do it. My old ones, like the elastic, ran out finally. Um, but yeah, it was just this whole thing. I'm like, I first had the Aldi debacle, then I had the Coles debacle. I'm like, Connecticut hates me, man. I can't, can't do <laughs> Connecticut this. Connecticut hates everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody you sound so you. jaded. <laughs> Dayton, uh, tell me about your new place. I think it's the first episode you've been in there, right? Oh, Remembered. yeah, yeah. So uh, this is my new apartment. This is this is the uh, computer room, pretty much. So I've got my roommate's desk right there. Um, he works there when he's working from home. I work right here when I'm working from home. And then when Jacob moves in here, he's going to be right there against that wall. Um, Some men getting work done, you know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. Are you going to live in that room, Jacob? No, he's going to end up sleeping up in my room. Um, because That's cute. When uh... <laughs> Same bed to save space. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's casual. Just what um, bros do. Yeah, yeah. just doing a bunch of bros stuff. being dudes. Like, <laughs> yeah. Duh. Um, it's not like me and Dayton are bringing home ladies at this point, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good point. Um, but yeah, in this room, like, I'm excited. So I'm actually making acoustic panels for this room. Um, I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know if my mic is picking it up or not, but, like, the echo is kind of bad in this room. Oh, you can hear it. Um, it's only if you're looking for it is it bad. But I, it, I don't know. 
I, don't know I, I can tell over the last like last time we talked i guess yeah it's definitely more equity yeah it's not so awful I'm, so like yeah. i've i've went through and i and i mapped where all of like the primary or the primary and then the secondary reflections are in this room from my studio monitors um, <laughs> i know games like <laughs> fucking nerd some engineer shit so so <laughs> I've, of I'm course making... you would do that like why wouldn't you <laughs> gabe, gabe i care about my audio <laughs> what are you trying to say? You know exactly what I'm trying to say. Dude, I have a better mic than Jacob. I'm so? sorry that my computer sounds like. Why'd a you bring airplane. Jacob into this? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's just, he just trying to it. throw someone under the Jade. bus. He's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not last. That's all I'm trying to say. I oh, Jacob, Jacob, have don't you have some proof against that? I I may or may not have proof against that. Um. Quick, quick intermission here. So I was talking to my friends, and she recently binged the entire podcast because um, she's. Awesome, That's like probably us. like seventy-five plus hours. Yeah, where we it's probably yeah. It's probably up to like if you add up all the little bits at the end, mm -hmm. probably around eighty. Um, but yeah, she's on that binge like, which I always appreciate. Anyway, uh, so she binged the entire show, and I was asking her like, okay, do you have any like overarching themes and <laughs> suggest, like anything? <laughs> You've noticed over the course of, you know, these 72 episodes you've listened to, just like, oh, yeah, this, this, and, like, yeah, Gabe's audio sounds like shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> That's bullshit. Dude, I Gabe, okay. Gabe, I read these myself, dude. I to can be fair, here's what she said. she said. She said, somebody, she, I hear this weird, like, computer fan, <laughs> yeah. and, and I hear, like, a mechanical keyboard every once in a while, and yeah. Gabe just sounds different than everyone else. It's I don't know why I sound like, different because I have the same fucking mic that, that Joseph Because had. your setup is different and the room is different. Okay, Dude. I'm sorry I got the worst room in the house. Oh, it's not my Gabe, bad. Gabe, it is not just the fucking room. It's not just the room. <laughs> okay, the computer is super fucking loud. I'm not it's not lie. just the computer either. Oh, maybe it's just my voice. <laughs> it just replaced me. Fire me for someone else. All right, get Tim on. Get Tim on. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll replace me with Tim. Yeah. Get a more we're, soothing we're voice. We're working on a solution, Gabe. We're going to get this boom arm situation. I know. I, okay, so I have the boom mic arm, right? And I have a pop filter and everything. But, like, the way that me, me and Jacob are at the same desk, and the way that they designed it, it just, like, doesn't attach like, you can't clamp things onto it really well. You can't clamp on a damn it. hole into it. It's a nice desk. <laughs> it's me, me and Dayton are going to build an apparatus this summer that will allow clampage onto my desk yeah. and game. A sexual Maybe apparatus. <laughs> clampage. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, hopefully that'll help. But we're, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. But I honestly, I would say, Gabe, tonight you sound better than usual. <laughs> So is he is he is he does he have his discord running through uh through his webcam mic right now though i don't think so i think so i think he sounds fine yeah i'm not i'm not uh, hearing the buzzing in the background yeah uh, so it's not like 85 degrees it's only 70 so the computer is not taking off yet <laughs> and i say yet because there's still 20 minutes left <laughs> it's probably gonna do it by the end of it <laughs> well and gabe like me and you just got like the same computer essentially yeah because my, my computer has definitely been louder is louder now than it used to be is it the graphics card do you think so here's the deal it must be, right? <laughs> we have different we have different cpu fans before i had a blower card which means like typical cards will like take air in and then like use that to cool it off uh mine would blow air out and those are typically they take louder and a little bit warmer and just like more inefficient and then on top of that i have a water cooling unit so it uses like um, water to cool down the cpu <laughs> great <laughs> but, great explanation crazy right? mm -hmm. but uh you're telling me <laughs> water <laughs> cooler <laughs> uses water yeah. <laughs> So part of the I don't water cooling I don't buy it. cooler is it has a pump, and the pump is pretty pretty loud. So uh, if it gets a little warm, and the pump kicks on, and then the fans kick on, um, and then I also have it's just like a whole like cascading effect. I've worked to like basically turn the fans off and kind of overheat my computer on purpose a little bit so that it would be quiet. It doesn't fucking matter. 
it still just fucking takes off. So. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. feel like the CPU we got is kind of runs hotter in general. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a lot. It. It's a lot beefier. It's got a lot more shit going on. Yeah. But anyway, back to Dayton's uh, new apartment. Oh. House. Yeah. Um. What would you so describe? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like a duplex. Yeah, kind of, yeah. So this, know. so it's technically a townhouse. This, this like complex is townhouses that are brand new, um, and there's three different like buildings of townhouses. We got the unit which only has two townhouses, so it's a duplex townhouse. Um, three floors. First floor has like garage, and then this room. Um, second floor is like the main floor, which has like the kitchen, the living room, the porch, stuff like that. And then the third floors are, are like big bathroom and our bedrooms but it's really nice it's really white um yeah like everything is white cabinets are white like every like wall is white um like culturally or <laughs> both yeah I guess both. <laughs> okay but it's I'm got that actively, new house smell yeah yeah i'm actively trying to make this room not just white so the sound panels that I'm building are going to have some nice blue fabric over them. Um, I'm going to get a nice carpet behind me, which we have a small carpet, but you can't really see it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to make the sound panels. I'm excited to, to make this room sound better, make it a good listening spot for music and recording and stuff like that. So yeah. Well, and you got the ambiance going with your uh, LEDs you set up. I do, I do. Now that you can actually see the see the lamp in the picture. Before the lamp was right by my computer in the in Jacob's current apartment. Um, but yeah, it's actually cool. And I actually installed LEDs behind my desk, and it like backlights my computer. So like that's actually like how I'm like lighting my face up right now. Um, and those are controlled through the Hue app as well, so I can control all that from my phone. Um, it's really fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also set them up behind your bed so you can wake up that way as well. Yeah, yeah, I set them up behind my bed so then in the winter time when like I wake up before the sunrise, I can have that imitate a sunrise and then wake me up with light instead of having to deal with an alarm. So I'm, dude, I'm like, I'm freaking living the life right now. <laughs> And You've I been think pimping the shit out of that house, and I am I'm here for it. Yeah, dude, it's it's exciting. It's exciting as shit. Um, but like the one thing that was like cool about these lights is that I bought thirty feet of of hue lights, basically, for the same price as like I think six feet of normal hue lights, of like normal like hue LED strips. Um, because I just put it together myself, so like. And you got it from Alibaba. <laughs> yeah, so it took like two months. It took me two months to get all the parts and everything like that. But, <laughs> um, you know what? That's that's the price you got to pay. And so. all the everything was in Chinese, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> figured it out. <laughs> it's just wires, you know. You just stick the wires in where you think think they're supposed to go. Positive kinda... goes to positive, negative goes to negative. Yeah, or more or, so. or less, you know. <laughs> Whatever. As long as the angry pixies are content, it's all you need to know. As long as the angry pixies are all going in the same direction. Yep, that's that's all that matters, really. You don't want to have two angry pixies fighting each other. Oh, when they hit head on, oof, yeah. that's when the black smoke escapes. Uh -huh. don't, want, don't want the black smoke to escape your electronics. Nope. Gotta nope. Are you sure you got a degree in EE? I am uh, very sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is all they teach you. Is keep the black smoke in the box and don't let the angry pixies hit head on. <laughs> that's that's all there is to my degree. Congrats, wow. you all graduated. So Joseph, any uh, new developments going on in your life in the past two weeks? I know your life's boring as shit, but No, I feel like you asked that for a reason, like you know something I don't. No, I'm, just, I'm just joking. No, I just, I just, uh, I literally have, I've think I've talked to you once in the past two weeks and it's been really true. weird. Cause, I mean we lived together for eight months you, or yeah, less. About and then we were separated for a month, but I still gotta see you on the weekends. And now and like I don't Now see you live you in a all. different time zone. Yeah, so it's it's been 
you, I've been weaning off of you. Not, that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> uh, it's been pretty nice for me. Um, <laughs> no, I, I haven't really had anything super interesting happen to me recently. I uh, found a brown recluse spider in my room a couple weeks ago. That was fun. Aren't those dangerous? Yeah, they are. Are you sure it wasn't a wolf spider? No, the legs were longer and the body wasn't as big. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, no, I I like saw it. I'm like, that kind of looks like a brown recluse. Killed it, threw it away, flushed it down the toilet. And then I uh, looked it up and I was oh, like... That's what yeah. the worst thing you've ever done. <laughs> well, I just wanted to confirm that that's what it was. And like, yeah... I'm pretty sure it was. And then I immediately looked up how to prevent spiders. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is uh, the smell of citrus. Apparently they don't like citrus. So I've been burning the shit out of this uh, orange cinnamon candle. <laughs> <laughs> like every couple of days I'll burn it for, you know, like But Joseph, I thought your lease said no candles in that it house. It does. And what the landlord doesn't know won't hurt him. Until he winds up with a burnt down house. <laughs> hey, I'm careful. It can't be much worse than what he started with. Uh, yeah, with honestly. Two. House was barely not burnt. <laughs> yeah. The Remember yard was burnt to fuck. I, I feel like we've talked about it, though, didn't we? Yeah, I think we mentioned it. Yeah. yeah, so there's been more issues. Um, currently, our house uh, Snapchat group chat, chat mm. is uh, titled The House That's Falling Apart. Um, so, have you had yeah. more issues besides like the shower oh, yeah yeah what else is happening electrical issues mainly currently. yeah there was this one outlet if you plugged anything and i mean <laughs> you can put a fork in and i just get it <laughs> <laughs> like just the butt end of a like a phone charger no we plugged like a a little night light into mm -hmm. it and it would short a breaker or like trip a breaker that like the router was on and like half the living room was on um so we got that fixed throughout the week too like you just like we'd come home from work and we have no wi-fi because that's where the, the router was on jeez so we're pretty fun. yeah it's pretty neat now? uh were you there for the water heater thing no uh <laughs> so Tim we spilled about 10 gallons of water yeah. in our basement. <laughs> it was on the phone the landlord. And he's like, oh, hit this like valve or whatever. And it just like spilled water all over our fucking basement. And then they... and why, was he, why was he there in the first place? What was he trying to fix? So when it was like chilly, Tim was working from home. It was like yeah. 45 degrees, 50 degrees for like a week. So they, Tim was working from work home. Floor at all. So he turned on the heat and it didn't work on the second floor. It worked on the first floor. Not the okay. second floor. So Tim went to like check it out. He texted the landlord, sent him a picture of like the the hot water, the boiler, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, you got to, that knob, turn that knob, what happens? And he goes, nothing. What about this valve? It's above it. It looks closed. Oh, yeah, flip that. He flips it. A little bit of water starts dripping out the front. And then like water just starts pouring out the back. Oh. And like he tries to like turn it off quick, but he said it looked like <laughs> ten gallons had gotten on the ground before he could turn it off. <laughs> and then I mean the landlord can't be mad because the landlord told him to do it. I know. Right? So then oh, the landlord he got mad. Oh no, it gets better. <laughs> Fuck him. No, no, it gets better. It so gets he better. calls an HVAC guy to come check it out. So the HVAC guy comes and goes, okay, so what's the issue? And Tim explains it to him and says, like, you know, the landlord told me to do this and this and this. And the, land the HVAC guy goes, well, he sounds like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, the boiler's, like, kind of in a back corner. And he goes, well, it's we need to get to the, the back. That Joseph's at right now. Yeah, behind, it's directly behind this wall. So he's like, I need to get at the back. But it's so tight, I can't get back there. What, is there an access on the back? And he goes, no. He goes, well, your landlord's a fucking idiot. There should be, like, we need to get to the back of it. And so he's like, we got to cut a hole in the wall. <laughs> and I'm like, you're not cutting a damn hole in my fucking room. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and um, so we tell the landlord that. And the landlord's like, what are you talking about? So he comes, brings his buddy. This is like a couple days later. Brings his, like, 
handyman buddy over with him. They check it out and they call the HVAC guy a fucking idiot for telling him to need to or cut a hole in the wall and then they fix the radiator. And then and then the landlord has the audacity to say, "Yeah, I don't think I'm going to charge you guys for the HVAC guy." And we're like, "Damn straight you're not. It yeah, was broken when we got job. here." <laughs> like he's like, "Yeah, I'm out 200 bucks for that already, you know, I I don't think I'm going to charge you for it though. I'm like, yeah, we came here and the radiator was broken. (laughs) What are you, what? (laughs) What I have so many questions. And then the air conditioner was broken too. That was Yeah, we had like window units. And he didn't want to buy us a new one and Tim kind of fought him on it. He ended up getting a new one. That's probably why the tenants fucking wrecked the grass. Well, that's that's my question, Dayton. That's my question. Either... Did the old tenants just live with everything being broken? Or did they systematically take down every single thing in that house before Ooh, they left? No. <laughs> Holy fuck. How have there yeah. been that many issues when he just like... And, and here's the thing. I was talking to Joseph and, and Tim about this earlier. I've never, ever had this many issues total in any yep. of the places I've stayed at. Ever. So like, at 107, we had what? The sink break twice maybe remember like the the drain like came on the door frame and he sat on a guy the next day when it was in the winter and then i broke the door when he came to visit and yep. he just literally took a drill and drilled it back in and yeah. then well, and, that, and that house was built in like the 1800s <laughs> that house is so fucking old and then my the sink that was in my room leaked for a little bit and i told him about it and he oh, yeah. sent a guy pretty quickly but that was like it like yeah. i don't know we never had any other issues i feel like no, and even the other place that I've been at, it's never been that big of an issue. It's just very odd that all of this is coming up. Also, Hopefully. why does every landlord have like their own buddy, like a handyman buddy? <laughs> I feel like you... a requirement for being a landlord. To, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Like... otherwise you're gonna pay people to like check out every little thing. Yeah, yeah. I'll just send my my buddy over, yeah. and I'm sure after that point, like. He, because he's like a contractor, I think, and like working in like I don't know whatever industry. I think he's a roofing or something. I don't know what he does, mm-hmm. but like you meet people like that, and then like after sending enough electricians over, you know, to a house, you tend to meet them and like I don't know, you just be friends with people like that. And like, oh, I also do this. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. You know, you just kind of meet those people when you're in that profession. It's just like I don't know. It's like who do you blame for this shit? Though, like, because like. The electrical thing was like a wiring issue. It sounds like, like somebody. Just I have no one. idea what was up with that. I think they replaced the breakers. It entirely. could have just been a shit breaker that was going bad too. I don't know, but apparently the electrician came once, told him it was going to take a while, and had to come back. Mm-hmm. And that was yeah. Well, he looked at it and he was like, "There's some things that were like a little touchy." He said they're touchy or something like that. And like did a little minor stuff and it's like if you want me to come back and replace everything it's going to take more time and more money and they're like okay and then it tripped like two or three times that week and like hey <laughs> do you have everything you need to do <laughs> yes please um yeah. the guy back up. he brought his wife that was yeah. weird also like i opened the door and he's like you're not Tim, and I'm like, no, but I live here. <laughs> like, <laughs> about that, like he's like, I only talk to Tim. <laughs> yeah, he like he like looks super confused, and he's like, oh well, are you expecting us? I'm like, yeah, you're the electrician. You're here to fix the thing. He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, go. go. You know where it is. Go. I'm like, like, oh, I brought my wife, and I'm like, why? <laughs> I wasn't gonna ask questions. Just. You're a fucking electrician. Fix the shit. I don't know. <laughs> and then when he left, he goes, yeah. And then he left. He's like, Tim's still not here? No. Can you tell him this? I'm like, he's my roommate. Yeah, I'm going to tell him what happened. Like, I'm not some stranger house sitting for him. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 he's, he's probably run into a lot of, like, Gabe's old situation. Like, you, like, live together. Don't really, like, talk, you know? That's true. Yeah. Or, like, you don't know who's over. at Like, because there's... I don't know, some other people over at the time. There was so it's like, you know, are you friends? Or do you live here? Yeah. So, like, I get it, but it was just really funny the way he's like, you're not Tim. And I'm like, Is yeah. No, I'm the other white engineer. 
Oh, no, other. no, not that one. The <laughs> other, other white and slightly <laughs> taller one. Yeah. Well, you guys have to keep us updated on the state of your house because it sounds like it's falling apart every single day. I'll let you know when the shingles come off because that's <laughs> that's next, honestly. That's going to be when you move out. You're going to fucking take the shingles off. <laughs> <laughs> they won't notice <laughs> i wonder if by the end of your lease you'll understand what happened with the first tenants like if you're gonna be so angry you'll understand <laughs> i'm afraid that that's gonna happen yeah, yeah i feel like we're already getting there yeah gave anything new with you bought a couch <laughs> oh you got, you got your your see you now dayton's pimping out his his uh room you're also pimping out your room yeah yeah with a futon pants. that's my pants because it's really hot i have shorts on I don't have no pants on. <laughs> keep keep the camera up towards your face, kid. <laughs> uh, no, I got couch. I'm gonna redecorate this room. I'm gonna so there's no wall, and that's why you can hear shit from downstairs a lot. So I want to get <laughs> they get curtains for the inside to like sound dampening curtains. Hopefully, get a TV. Got some speakers coming. Pretty excited about that. How is that couch? It's like a hundred bucks on IKEA, right? You know, it's it's a soft bench. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you ended up going with the Target one. Yeah, we got that Target. Oh. So the design from the Target and IKEA, they were very clearly inspired by each other. They're the like, same thing. They're the same fucking couch. <laughs> it's honestly it's... not that bad, but it's not something I would like sleep on, I guess. Because it's one of those ones that like folds into a bed, but it's yeah. like I would never do that in a million years. It's gonna be a, it's a stiff ass bar. Um, That's where when I come to visit. That's where I'm gonna. Yeah, see. If someone needs to crash, like whatever. If two people need to crash, because we got the couch downstairs. That couch sucks to sleep on, though. The yeah. the, the leather chair is high. honestly better. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's that that way lean back action. The the la the the old school lazy boy. I don't know what else is going on. Uh, getting hit with a ton of existential dread on on a daily basis as of late. Yeah. That's been a lot of fun. Welcome to the workforce. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, it went away for like a solid couple months. I'm like, this is fine. I can live like this, and now it's coming back. That's mine amazing. hits. Mine hits on like a weekly basis. Yeah, I think it's been hitting a lot. More is it like just... Monday morning specifically? Sunday no. night. Sunday night <laughs> are the big ones. No, do you uh, see my mind strikes like during the middle of the day? Because like mm -hmm. the first, the first like half of the day, I'm just like whatever, like I'm just doing this shit, and then like the second half of the day, I'm just like, yeah, oh, forty-five what? more years of this. <laughs> like, it, see, I don't know. It's hard to explain. The mornings are fine. Early mornings are fine, and honestly, like after like two o'clock, I like finally get into like a zone. Usually, it's like okay that's like i've finally gotten like responses on emails usually and like i can like start like working on stuff it's 10 a.m 10 a.m is the worst time for me mm -hmm. where it's like i've been at work for three hours by that point mm -hmm. and sometimes i haven't heard back from emails i've sent the night before or the afternoon before and like i'm just like stuck on something uh, that's it's 10 a.m 10 to like noon is the worst time for me yeah i can i can relate to that when i was i haven't on to be honest i haven't worked an eight to five in a while uh or eight to four whatever the fuck but Seven. um yeah but when i did my internship a couple of, uh summers ago i felt that joseph where it's like 10 a.m rolls around you've been there for like four hours and it's like i have nothing to do because i'm waiting on this or this person and you're just sitting there like fuck <laughs> you're like kind of sleep at least me i'm always sleepy and it's just like i i just would i would much rather just be busy all the time if i was busy for that entire you know eight hours like that would suck in its own way i'm sure the grass always is greener but i i almost hate more just sitting around like not having anything to do yeah because like you show up in the morning it's like okay i've got a list of tasks and then you like you hit them it's like okay i need to hear back from this person about this this person about this I've worked this as far as I can for now. Cool. You know, it's just... It's not like you can fuck off and, like, play video games or watch Netflix while you wait for this email to come back. Yeah. Um, you can't when you work from home. That's a bonus. Yeah. That but, um, yeah, it just sucks. But you're switching work schedules re uh, pretty soon, right, Joseph? So that, that might help. 
Yeah, we started this week with a 980 schedule. So oh, nine wish, days dude. of working nine hours, and then you get every other Friday off. And honestly, my schedule is not changing at all, other than I have an excuse to not go to work on Friday. <laughs> like, Damn I've been working pretty much nine hours to begin with. So I've been working like nine and a half. Today I worked over 10 hours, but yeah. So it's like, I'm not going to work tomorrow because you'll be, I'll be damned if I'm not <laughs> going to take the first one off because that sets a precedent mm -hmm. and I'm not setting the precedent of me like working all these Fridays that I get off. So fuck that. I, I'm, I emailed my uh, project manager for one of my projects. I'm like, I got up to this far today pretty much as far as I wanted to get to. I feel pretty good. Not going to come in tomorrow unless you really need me, but probably not going to. So I wish I could work a 980 schedule. Same. I mean, I pretty much I kind of well, like I work close to one like when I'm like right now. Cuz like right mm -hmm. I'm my I'm my work front work in the office weeks. I work eight and a half hours and then I just work I work six hours in the office and I'm done by noon on that Friday. So like, it's like, I barely work anything on that on the Friday, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It seems like the, it's the best work schedule I've ever heard. And I think it's the necessary step to get to the four day work week. I think we should eventually get to, there's been so many studies showing that that's much more productive. And like, we do shit on Fridays anyway. Let's be honest. Like everywhere I've worked, it's Fridays. Like, Nah, we'll do it on Monday. You know, like people are just fucking standing around for eight hours. Like, okay, can I just go home then if nobody's gonna fucking do anything? Like, yeah, people aren't productive eight hours straight. And if people think they are, like, that's why I feel like when work from home's happening, people are like, wait, people are still getting the same amount of stuff done. It's like, yeah, because I spend, like, I don't spend that, nobody spends that much time straight focusing. There's times where, like, you run into something like, oh, let's talk about, you know, whatever fucking thing it is like lawn mowers i don't know like boring do the what shit what the fuck the do you talk about at work <laughs> I'm just making a dumb excuse you know they made like <laughs> i heard one in the background uh, <laughs> just i don't know you just like talk about whatever for a little bit and like that kills some time or whatever yeah I don't know. four days would be nice we'll see we'll see what happens but uh gabe and joseph i want updates on the house Dayton, I want updates on upgrades to your house. I'll try to give updates of how well, we're in Connecticut. Hopefully, well, no, next next week I don't think I'll have the panels done yet because I'm still waiting on the installation. I have all the wood, the screws, and the fabric and everything like that, so I can frame it all out this weekend. Ooh, can I help? Yeah, yeah, I'm planning on doing it on Saturday, and because I'm not using power tools, I think it's probably okay to get drunk while building them. <laughs> so. <laughs> So that sounds like a good plan. Uh, lift up the cut or measure three times, cut once. Yeah. <laughs> <Just anything>. yeah. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> quick, right, quick question, Dayton. Mm -hmm. You you previously mentioned that Jacob's gonna set up his desk right to your left, uh -huh. I believe, right there. Uh huh. Um, how are you guys gonna record the podcast? We're gonna record on my mic. For sure. Uh, that's and cute. Yeah. Share, yeah. They'd be not... fucking Can you plug two headphones into your uh, your audio thing interface, Dayton? Audio controller. No. I get a splitter though. Yeah, but then it's gonna split it into left and right channel. Aren't there some that don't do that? I know. They... Maybe. I, know I mean, to be them. honest, I could probably fucking wire something up to make it to make it work. <laughs> like... I was Have just not, curious what your. Uh, your Have you not seen Spider-Man: Far From Home, where his plan is to watch movies with MJ on the plane, so he gets the headphone splitter? Nah, I haven't. I, I really same. haven't. And, and then, then what's his face? That's like twenty-one, but also not. Uh, swoops in and gets it. Yeah, like his own headphone splitter. Great. Okay. I, yeah. So when I was driving out here, I stayed at my uncle's house on Tuesday night, and he has like a home theater. And he has, like, every Marvel movie and just, like, a shit ton. I haven't seen that one since theaters. So I'm like, we're watching Far From Home. It's so fucking good, people. Go watch that movie. <laughs> Mysterio in it is just perfect. But, uh... I yeah. love me a good Jake Gyllenhaal movie. You know? what, a, what a what a man. Uh, thank you for listening to our episode this week. Um, as always, you can find our show every Monday on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Google Play. 
Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at EWF Podcast and follow us on Twitch at EWF underscore podcast. We will see you next week. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.